Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Stephanie with Lumeria Star. And today what we're gonna do is take a look at um, the decks I worked with in February, as well as just some other February favorites. I have a book, I have some like products I finished and that's kind of been a new fun thing for me to kind of just like track and be mindful of. So we're just gonna go through all the things and I'm filming this on my lunch break, so I'm going to try to be less verbose than I usually am. And I'm just going to get to the heart of um, what I'm trying to share. So let's get into things. Let's start with decks because I know that's probably why you're here. So the first deck I wanted to share, this is the Tarot of Aphrodite. This is by Natasha Fromm. This is the second edition. And I do have the first edition. And... Um, Natasha was generous enough to send me the second edition, which I was really excited about. I was very happy with the first, but with the second edition, it comes with this gorgeous book, uh, guidebook, which I think is the game changer, and I will show you why. Um, but for those of you who don't know, I do work with Aphrodite as um, a goddess, as a deity, so she's someone I do a lot of like deeper work with when it comes to like self-love and self-worth so I feel very connected to this deck and this was perfect to work with for the month of February I felt which can often be kind of like love month so I thought it was a really nice deck to do love readings with also self-love readings with and the artwork is obviously gorgeous because it's all classical paintings and she does a really nice job of in my opinion pairing it with um, the tarot. So these are gorgeous. I also still love my first edition. So there's a few differences, but not many. I want to say there might not even be many or any now that I'm thinking about it. I know I did kind of like a walkthrough myself comparing the two and they're, they're pretty similar. Um, I know people were complaining about like wanting the art sharpened and, um, I was fine with the old one. I thought it was gorgeous, but this is also equally as gorgeous. I love the pink edging and it's just such a beautiful feminine deck. Look at this world card. That is absolutely stunning. Um, this is also, let me show you, it's gilded in a really pretty kind of pink rose gold kind of color. So if you are a fan of Aphrodite or just classic artwork, this deck will be great. Um, what I love about this deck is every single card, um, not only does it tell you the artwork, like the original artwork, but it also gives you an affirmation, which I love. That part, that was, that was kind of like a winning um, piece for me here was the affirmations. They give the keywords and then the meaning. So I think this is just a really awesome guidebook and I'm so happy to have this because the original first edition deck um, it came with like a little white book that just cited the artwork, which was cool, but like I really wanted like the, almost like the messages from Aphrodite if I'm working with her. So I'm just so excited to have this second edition and this was a total win for me this month. So that is Tarot of Aphrodite. Um, I don't think I've shown this one on my channel before. Um, I was able to pick up I know how we feel about Doreen Virtue. She kind of cancels herself in the community. Um, and we know that she does no longer do any type of divination work whatsoever. She's kind of renounced it herself. So needless to say, her decks are will never be in print again. Um, there's a lot of like, what's it called? Like the counterfeit decks. Um, you really want to be mindful not to spend your money on counterfeit decks. So these you have to find... Um, secondhand and it's crazy how people are spending hundreds of dollars on this I was not going to do that as much as I wanted this deck um, and you could see it's definitely been very well loved I picked this up I want to say on Poshmark for $40 and it's going on eBay and like websites like that for like 200 300 400 which is insane I was not going to pay that but it was it just happened to me my day I found it 40 bucks yes please so I went ahead and got this deck maybe a couple months ago and it's great for love readings I love the vintage artwork and this goes really well with the tarot of Aphrodite I was pairing those two together 
and it's just a fun deck you know I know these decks aren't for anyone but I think this has Doreen Virtue's decks definitely have merit in their ways and there's also like a nostalgia to this it's very like 1990s um divination if you know what I mean so I think there's a charm in that and yeah I think this is a fun deck it, it's been on my like wish list I got the guidebook everything is in great condition and you can tell it's definitely been worn and used and well loved because like we can see all of the foil has been chipping off but I love that and yeah I'm just so happy that I was able to find this online for a very reasonable price because I just me personally I'm not spending hundred dollars on a deck no shade to people who do but that is not that is not for me okay so moving right along this is another deck I love to work with for like love month this is the rainbow heart tarot this is by I believe Rachel Rosen Cotter um this is the first edition I believe future editions have a like rainbow holographic gilding because this is a first edition mine didn't it was just plain white so I did edge it myself in like a bubblegum pink which I think is really cute and this artwork is very bright it's very like retro you know I love a retro moment and this is just a fun deck this is probably one of my favorite nine of wands this is so gorgeous it actually gives me a nine of pentacle vibes I love this colorful judgment card like they're just this deck is so great um I don't have anything but positive things to say about this one of my favorite let's see if I can find it it has one of my favorite moon cards too which is very explicit but like I love that let's see if I passed it mm, I probably passed it Moon card, where are you? Okay, we've passed it, but there is the um, very ample chested empress. And I also really like this ace of pentacles. It feels very abundant. And now I really want to show you the moon card. Oh, here it is. Hold on. Like, love that. It's so good. So this is a lovely, lovely deck that I really enjoy working with. There's um, there's also a tr like travel size, like miniature size that I'd love to get. It is a little pricey, um, like with shipping and everything, but, and I'm, I'm really trying to do again, like this like low buy year again, so I don't need it, but I would like to have it eventually. So love this deck so much, Rainbow Heart Tarot. Okay another fan favorite comes out every year this is one that's not going anywhere this is my moon void tarot this is the third edition i didn't realize this was out of print right now i actually had multiple people this month reach out to me like like separately in my dms asking if like because they wanted this so badly um if i would sell mine and i was like oh girl i was like this is not for sale <laughs> so sorry um but you know i know there's like the french edition online on like amazon like that could be an option but like you gotta cold this one you gotta pull this deck out of my cold dead hands because it's not going anywhere i love this deck it's very much like a soul deck for me i love the extra cards the guidebook is probably one of my favorite guidebooks she just stephanie has a way of just like the way she interprets the cards just really makes sense to me and at the same time also offer me a fresh perspective that like I might not have thought of before so I just really appreciate that about um, her guidebook she also uses some numerology and things like that and I just this is all around a wonderful deck um, it's one I use all year round whenever I pull this this reminds me of my spirit guide skittle um, I have nothing ever but good things to say about the Moon Void Tarot. So much so that I am curious about that French edition that comes with a, a full guidebook um, in French, but I kind of want it. It's the one that's like the black, white, and red one. Again, I do not need it. I'm on a low buy year, but you know, part of me really wants it, but I'm gonna talk myself out of it for right now. And that's okay. 
All right, moving on to the next deck I use this month, the Lioness Oracle Tarot. This deck and I have had a really interesting and complicated relationship. This, um, first of all, I just love all the roses. This deck, what I appreciate about this deck is all the hard work it took to actually make an analog collage. This is not collage work that was done, you know, on a computer. This was paper, like magazine cutouts. This is using a an X-Acto knife. Like this is the kind of stuff I used to do when I was younger. I loved doing collages. So like, I just appreciate this like art medium. Um, so visually I'm drawn to it, but for the longest time I could not connect with this deck. Sometimes I thought the artwork wasn't helping me like tap into the meaning. I tried to rehome this multiple times. It just never, it never got picked up. So I'm like, okay, there must be a reason why no one's picking this up from me. No one wants to get it from me. Let me start working with it. So last year I actually did like a deep dive with it and it just started to click. And I think for me with this deck, I had to let the deck show me how it wanted to be used rather than me telling the deck this is how I'm going to use you if that makes sense for any of you card readers out there let me know if that resonates but this deck is a slower deck this deck wants one card pulled two cards max that's it and it wants you to sit with the image it wants you to sit and reflect and a lot of times when I pull cards with this deck I don't get it right away like it's not like another deck where I'm just like oh yep got the message taking it and moving on, I have to like leave it out and I have to be like, okay, like, what does this mean? Does this make sense now? And like, once I started working with the deck in that way, it just clicked for me. So this just goes to show like sometimes decks don't connect right away. It's kind of like people, right? Like you meet people and you're like, mm, I don't like them or, Ooh, I like them, but like, I don't know why we're not vibing. Um, continuing to give things a chance sometimes shows that like you can work through that. So um, this is a perfect example of that. I actually ended up rehoming the Oracle deck, the Visions of the Muse Oracle. Um, that one went and of course I'm regretful for, for sending that one out because it's out of print right now. So I'm kind of on the hunt to get it back and that's okay. But I think because I can connect with this now, I'm looking forward to maybe connecting with that one again because I didn't the first time so just just funny thing about these decks you know but this one my mom actually gave me for my birthday years ago um because I'm a Leo so we've got the lioness energy and that feels special so yeah I gotta keep it I gotta keep it okay so what else did I use this month oh this one is a really you know fan favorite I've used a lot especially during love month. This is the Vessel Oracle, and this is by Mary Elizabeth Evans, a Spirit Speak Oracle deck. First of all, just like the box. Can we, can we just look at how sweet that box is? I love the backs, these like bright pink and bright blue. And these are just really kind of like this imperfect artwork with just one keyword. And, you know, just as it kind of is called Vessel, I think this really kind of taps into that heart-centered energy. So I'll just pull one along with Tarot, and it just always makes the mark. It just always makes sense. It doesn't shy away from, like, harder things, release, um, anxiety. Like, look at that. Boundaries. Defeat. So this is definitely, you know, not an all love and light deck. It definitely has that balance, which I really appreciate. So I really enjoy pulling this one out every year to work with it. And I don't really use the guidebook. This one to me just feels very intuitive. I can just go off the, the one word. And um, so, yeah, I don't really use this at all. But this is what the guidebook looks like. You know, she it's all handwritten. She writes just a very tiny message. Um, certainly, you know, it's really helpful. I just don't tend to use it, but I love this deck a lot. And, um, yeah, this one's probably staying with me indefinitely. It's a great one for love month and love work. Okay. 
let's take a look at this is one i work with as a pair this is the reclaim oracle and the black violet tarot this is the cherry blossom edition so i'm going to take a quick sip of my seltzer right now so these decks feel like sister decks to me and the messages are so good together and I, this month, I wasn't really doing a lot of, like, shadow type work. I feel like I was doing a lot more of that in, like, December and January. So, to be honest, I didn't really use these decks a whole lot in the month of February. Just because that wasn't the space I was in. But I just want to show you how amazing these look together, how amazing they read together. I just think they are sisters. And sometimes the images even mirror each other. Two of cups with limitation. This push, this person is, you know, they, this kind of couple is kind of coming together. This one's pushing one back. So interesting. Love in the tower. Strength and rage. This one's upside down. Patience and Three of Wands, Queen of Pentacles and Scarcity. Like these decks just love each other. But it wasn't it wasn't the month for me to really go deep with them, and that's okay. I think I maybe used it once or twice as a as a pair. Look at this, Two of Wands and Shame, Ace of Cups and Regret. Like I could do this all day. King of Wands and Surrender. Oops, I am just dropping cards all over the place. This is one of the extra cards, the woods. Discouragement, five of swords and denial. Magician and attachment. And like, even look, like we've got the figures and these cards almost have the same posturing. It's just so interesting when that happens. See, look at this. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. So cool. Look at that. Really interesting. We've got these like images here. The sun or the maybe this is a moon, I'm not sure. Yeah. I love these two. So didn't work with these a whole lot this month, but love them and I believe the cherry blossom edition is out of print now I think um, I think the regular black and white edition is still available and I believe the reclaim oracle is still available as well this one is such a good deck for shadow work a wonderful deck for journaling or meditation if you don't have your hands on either of these highly suggest love Okay, this next one, um, the, the bag is not for the faint of heart. So if you've got children around, you've been warned, or if you're watching this at work, you've been warned to pause the video. So I'm gonna show you now. So this deck comes in this beautiful, fun adult bag. I actually got this um, from, it's a Peggy bag. So Lisa Pepez, she was showing it off in one video and I messaged her right away and I was like, I need one of these bags if you have extra fabric because I have the perfect deck for it. And she's like, oh my gosh, yes. Like, look how fun. Look how fun. So, of course, in this adult bag, I have my Sledis Tarot. And my Sledis Tarot is a cheeky, you know, reclaiming, you know, of the word slut as a very empowering word. We've got these gorgeous pink backs with this fun background. I edged this in a matte black, which I think it makes it look so sleek. And this deck, the artwork can be very provocative. We've got, you know, maybe they're sex workers or maybe they are just, you know, very sex positive. Um, some of them maybe feel like they're performers or artists or, you know, drag queens, like there, there's kind of this like gender fluidity in a lot of these um, people. 
And while that can be kind of off-putting to some, and there's also renaming, so the Empress is the whore, love that one. Um, this can definitely be off-putting. We have trans people in, in the deck. This, the Oracle, is the um, High Priestess. But in reality, this deck is... I feel like it's great for self-love. I feel like it's also great for... Um, love readings or relationship readings in general it's great for healing work it's great for shadow work like this deck um especially with the like pdf guidebook it comes with the write-ups are really great so as long as the artwork doesn't turn you off completely um to me it's like a it's like a turn on like i just i love I love the evocative artwork in this. I love the sex positivity. I love the inclusivity of this deck. And it's just fun. Like I always, whenever I use this, I just love and lovingly, you know, say, okay, like what do my sluts have to say today? And this deck is great. Um, I believe, I don't know if this is still in print. If it's not, I'm so sorry. Um, well, here's another renaming of the magician as the witch. So I love that. Um, the suspension is the hanged man. Let's see if there's any other renames. No, it's just a great deck. So I love this one. This always comes out for, you know, February love month. Also great if you're trying to do like some relationship and, you know, sexy readings. I think that could be really fun too. And of course, it's in the perfect bag. So how can we not love that? Like I'm a girl who just loves some good matching accessories for my tarot decks. Um, this one I, I showed last month in my um, like January recap. I was still working with the Seasons of the Witch in Bulk Oracle. And um, I just was really, why are these all out of order? Or like, I did not put this away very well. Um, I was just so connected to this deck that I used it for two months. I used it for my journaling practice. Um, I don't know. It hit all the right spots when I can kind of get to my like sad winter depression phase. Um, I think a lot of us do. And this deck just always met me where I was at. This deck was really great for like journal prompts. I use this for my new moon readings, my full moon readings. The artwork is absolutely gorgeous. The write-ups in the guidebook are so good. It always just like hit the mark of, of the message I needed to hear. So I'm really bummed to be putting this away since we're going into um, March. And, you know, we don't have an Ostara deck yet. I'm sure that's, I think that's the last one in the, um, the series, the Seasons of the Witch series. But the next one we'll be using will be the Beltane one. So I'll probably take that out. I mean, I guess I can, no, that's more of like an April, May deck. So it'll be a little bit, but love this deck so, so much. Um, can't say enough good things about it. And it really just supported me through my seasonal affective depression. So if you don't have this one, highly suggest you check it out if you are a fan of the series or if you um, want to work with some winter energy or you're just a fan of the artwork. I really love this one. So the last thing I got into deck-wise this month is I wanted to start playing with playing cards. So this deck, this is called the Council of Four Corners deck. So it's a playing card deck. You know, you could just use as a regular playing card deck, but also for divination. This is by um, Ren McMurdo Brignac, and she is the creator of the Dark Days Tarot and the Mother Tarot. So I have both of those. I really love her artwork. Um, and she had sent this to me, and I'm so grateful because it is so awesome so we've got this is the blue and pink edition there's also a red and black one which i also have and i'll i'll show that in a different video but again this is just a 52 card playing card set um it's got her traditional style of art if you're familiar with it um i like how it gives like if you're trying to bridge the gap between tarot and playing cards i think this does a nice job um, like you can see with like, I don't know, I feel like these are like teardrops. So like it kind of gives you that like 
message like oh okay like our heart hearts are emotions um like the diamonds are pentacles and we've got like the, these kind of like wands here for um clubs and then for the spades we have swords so they kind of give like little nods to the meaning like subtle and again you could just use this as playing cards you could play solitaire you could play whatever you want to play with this but i love um i love her court cards they're absolutely gorgeous it's a small size i want to say this feels like Lenormand size like it feels smaller than a playing card set but I've had a lot of fun just kind of dipping my toe into playing card divination um the guidebook that comes with it oh there's two extra cards too these are just really pretty I I've kept them in I actually pulled this one today and I was just kind of reading this intuitively as like get outside which is kind of fun it comes with a little guidebook. I'll show you the box too. It's just really nice. I'm a sucker for that magnetic closure. It's just a really beautiful, high quality deck. Comes with a little tiny guidebook, which kind of just really gives keywords. So I think it gives a nice jumping off point. So this is something that I'm just playing around with. Um, love this. And then I'm gonna show you something else I've been working with alongside of this. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but this is the first deck, um, book I picked up to try to figure out how to read playing cards. And I probably should have known by the title, this is fortune telling using playing cards. And it really does kind of give a fortune tellery aspect. And that's really not how I do divination. Like I'm looking for like inner guidance. I'm not like, I'm never when I read tarot or Oracle, I am never future forecasting, um, fortune telling. I'm not doing predictive readings of what will happen. I don't believe that's how divination works in, in my practice. Um, I think we have free will and we don't know how things are gonna pan out. So I, I, I'm i using this book as a jumping off point, but I will say I don't love it. I'm still practicing. I don't love it. If anyone reads playing cards, if you're watching this and you have a good book that you can suggest, please let me know down in the comments. I'm not sure this one's for me. Again, it's more fortune tellery. Like I can even give you an example and I, I just don't care for, like there's a quick, quick read in the back. Where is it? Um, okay, so like, let's say, so, okay. So this is the Romany way. Romany, Romany. Um, oops, hold on. So let's say I pulled the Ten of Diamonds. Um, this is a good, this is a good card often indicating marriage, an establishment of long and happy relationship, or a move to a home. I mean, I guess that is kind of like Ten of Pentacles. Okay, let's do... Mm, see now I'm eating my words here okay so eight of swords which would be considered if you're reading it tarot it would be considered eight of swords or eight of spades rather eight of swords um the upright meaning see I don't like this this card pr provides a health warning like I don't think we should be doing anything telling you know anyone oh we pulled this card you you're gonna have health issues like that doesn't that doesn't vibe with me it advises the questioner that unless he changes his ways and looks after himself, then illness will surely follow. Not a fan of that. I, I'm not a fortune teller. So I don't love this, but I need to find another resource. So if you have one, please let me know. Okay, so that is the deck portion. I just want to quickly show some products I've used up because um, just a long story short, because again, I'm trying to give the abbreviated version of things. Um, I've, with my no buy tarot year last year, I've really been kind of leaning into no buy, low buy, use what you have. And that's been really, really good for me, really good for my mental health, really good for my wallet. So I'm just, I'm getting excited when I use up products and I just want to like take note of like how long it actually takes to use up a product. So I just want to show you some things I've used up and whether I will buy them or not again. So the first thing I want to share, I feel like I never finish oil roller balls. 
Um, this one I got in a subscription box. It might have been a Goddess Provisions box, so I didn't like seek this out and buy it myself. I think the brand is Anusha, and this is a banishing roller oil, and it's got some herbs in there. But I finally, like, that took me a year and a half using it daily. I kept this at my desk, and I would, like, roll it on my hands or on my pulse points, and I would just kind of smell that throughout the day when I was working. One little thing like this took me almost a year and a half to use. So that is just a good, that's good information for me of like when I'm trying to buy something like this, like I have so many of these at home, so I don't need to be buying any of these. These last forever. So I'm just really proud I finished a whole roll, roller ball up. I, like, I know that's such a silly thing to be proud of, but like I'm proud of it. So that was one thing. Um, I think the rest are like skincare and hair care because I do love that too. And I'm just trying to showcase other things that I love to use. Um, so one thing I finished up this month, this is by Sunday Riley. This is the Blue Moon Tranquility Cleansing Balm. And of course, I originally picked this up because it was called Blue Moon, obviously. But I've been using this for a while. Um, it's a really nice container. But this is a like cleansing balm that like kind of melts into your skin and it had a really great scent. It was vanilla, tangerine, sweet orange, and cam chamomile and blue tansy. So I love this. I will most likely buy it again. I've bought this many times before, but I'm not going to buy this again until I use up some of my other cleansers. So loved this, but will not be buying until I need to. Um, another thing for my face that I finished up, I finally finished up, this is... Um, my moisturizer from Sunday Riley as well, CEO Afterglow. This is a vitamin C cream. And this is one I usually use in the summer because it's a little more like lightweight. And I fin finally finished this up in the month of February. This is one I've repurchased multiple times. I really do love Sunday Riley products, um, but I will not be repurchasing this. Repurchasing, oh my gosh, I can't talk. I will not be repurchasing this again until I've used up what I have, but I do love this and this will most likely be a repurchase sometime in the future. Um, body care. So I finished up another product um, that I started in the summer. This is by Kopari and this is the Guava Hydrating Body Wash. Um, I love using any kind of products that make my shower feel more fun because sometimes showering can just feel like ugh, a task. You know what I mean? So this was a fun summer scent and I finally finished this up. Um, I got this at like Marshalls or Home Goods, one of those. And yeah, it was nice. It was cheap. Probably wouldn't buy it again, but I'm glad I finished that up. Um, another body care item that I absolutely loved by Fenty Skin. Um, this was a limited edition. Um, this is called the Butter Drop. This is Shimmering Whipped Oil Body Cream, and the scent of this was absolutely divine. Um, oh my gosh, it smells like a, like a cinnamon roll or like Cinnabons. If you've ever walked by a Cinnabons in, a, in the mall, um, that's what this smells like on your skin, and it's got like a little light shimmer. So I was obsessed with this, and every time I showered and then put on this body cream, it just felt very luxurious so even though I do have some other lotions I can um, finish up first I did go ahead and already place an order for a new one of this only because this is limited edition and I really want this scent because this scent um, what is it called does it say the scent on here I want to say it's like warm cinnamon absolutely love this I did already buy a replacement it smells so good and it's so moisturizing and then two hair care products that I finally finished. Um, I have had this one forever. and so sorry, this bottle's really nasty looking. Um, this was um, a Shine Glaze by Uidad. I think that's how you pronounce it. And I have naturally curly hair that I don't typically wear curly a lot, but this Shine Glaze is still really great. But if you just want to do like one pump and you just want to get that little shine and oil back in your hair, this took me years to finish and it's only 2.5 fluid ounces and I want to say this took me four years to finish so like that's just really good information for me like how long some products take me to finish a hair oil will take me forever so like be really mindful when I'm buying that but finish that and that was great 
Um, conditioners, on the other hand, I go through like water because I have very thick hair and thick and dry hair. So this is by Orbe. This is the Gold Lust Repair and Restore Conditioner. Um, Orbe is a great product. Um, I wasn't like wowed by it, but it was good. And I'd probably buy this again at some point, but I have other stuff I need to finish first. So yeah, it was good. That's all I have to say about that one. So that is what I have to share with you for the month of February. So I'm just going to kind of put all these wonderful goodies up here. And I'd love to know your thoughts on some of these things, whether it's Dex, whether it's skincare. Let me know if you have a resource on how to read playing cards because I don't love the book that I got. I really don't. So let me put this all in frame here. Put my little naughty tarot bag here. But yeah, not a big fan of this, this book, but let me know if you've got some recs. Um, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I kept it a little bit shorter at like 35 minutes. I feel like I usually go 45 to an hour. So thumbs up for me. Um, if you liked this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye.